Welcome back to the channel, man. As always, friends, it is it is good to see you. So Stoker here, and today I got two things for you. Uh, so hopefully it won't won't be that long. The first one is how what not to do to your protractor, what not to do to your protractor. And the second one is just a little bit of a little bit of Stoker pride, as I think I mentioned last week. Uh, I have a soldier and a non-commissioned officer who are both uh, competing in a best warrior competition, uh, and so I was pretty stoked about that and I got something to share about that right after this so let's get to this all right right on so you know one of the things that I've seen dudes do a lot of the time um, and I think they do it because um, because they think it's cool because maybe they saw it on, on you know Ranger Joe tactical or whatever I, I don't know uh, but you know, they're, they're getting ready to set the protractor, and of course we need to be able to read uh, azimuth on our protractor. And so they'll take a piece of 550 cord, and they'll take a, a little piece of string out of here, and feed it through the center hole of the protractor. And tie a knot. I'm just going to do a double overhand right there. Probably should have done the figure eight, but it's all good. It's demonstration purposes only. And you know, they think that now they have this that they can they can pull it out and read their azimuth super easy. And then that way, you know, when they let me grab a map here, yeah, we'll look at the uh, Olympics. That's cool. When they need to pull a an azimuth, you know, they'll just pull up here on the string. And until they uh, have their azimuth, and I, in my opinion, this is this is setting yourself up for failure, right? So we'll say you know I was starting uh, up here on this really super high hilltop, <laughs> and I was going to come down and uh, look at this river right here, right? And we'll say I wanted to go. Actually, let's say let's say we want to go. Um, well, we'll just say over to this other hilltop right here, right? So from this hilltop to this hilltop, I'm never going to do this in a straight line, but you'll, you'll get the picture. You'll get the idea. So we take our protractor, we put it right over, uh, that, uh, mountaintop, and then we figure out wherever this hilltop is here. Okay, I got you there. It's right there. And then, boom, you know, we got 30 nine and a half degrees right so we'll call it we'll call it 39 degrees the problem is of course that if it's not absolutely tight like maybe you know i could do it right over the hilltop and i could it feels like it's tight because i have a finger down here and it's keeping it from from going straight and if i actually pull it straight and I, you notice the protractor hasn't moved. If I actually pull this thing straight, and I could maybe think I'm pulling it straight and tight, and I, man, I'm out here at 45 degrees. You know, I'm, I'm sitting right over the hilltop right there, but I can move this thing, and I can, I'm putting tension on it, and it's reading all over the place. And that's something that we have to do. We have to take all the variables out. We have to set ourselves up for success. You know, every time you plot a point, uh, you know, that, that pen, that pencil mark, whatever it is that you're using, is larger than a 10-digit grid cord, right? It's larger than 3 meters. In some cases, it could be upwards of 50 meters. Just a little prick mark. So you have a prick mark on both sides. Now, that's going to impact your distance, and it's going to impact your direction. So everything that we can do, everything that we can manage that's in our control to take those variables out of the question so that we know that everything is absolutely perfect is something that we need to do and so that's why I'm going to recommend either drawing your line on your map and I can show you how to do that effectively or you use a, a piece of paper you know and you just get a, a, a straight edge because when you use a string on your protractor like this if it's not absolutely 100% straight taut it could be off by several degrees on all it takes is just a little bit of a little bit of something and you think it's tight but it's not tight i recommend that you take your 
straight edge of your protractor and do use this method. Just draw a line out here where you're not going to be moving at all. Putting your protractor back down and then reading your distance. Oh, and look at look at that. That's 36, 37 and a half, all closer to 37. So it's 37 degrees. So already we're two degrees off, man. You got to put those variables back in your pocket. And so that's why I recommend either using this method or, or take a straight edge piece of paper, putting your protractor down and then just lining it up this way and then just reading up. And man, with this way, you, you can't go wrong because there is no, you know, pulling the string tight and having it, you know, having it loose, having it not loose. Um, it's just a variable that, that I don't want to trust my life on. I, I don't want to trust my life on this string. So there you go. There's something to not do. Don't, don't, don't do this to your protractor, man. I, I'm telling you, you're setting yourself up for failure. I know it's kind of cool because you can... You know, wing it around or whatever, but I don't know. It's, it's just me. In, in a separate video, I'll, I'll show you how I set up my protractors um, most of the time. I, I don't do it all the time. And again, I have a lot of protractors. But, uh, you know, like I said, you just, you want to, you want to, you want to put odds back in your favor because when you are looking for a 10 digit grid coordinate, when you're looking for a three meter square of the Earth's surface, you know, it, Everything matters. Everything matters. Your pace count matters. Your azimuth matters. Your plotting matters. And it can put you off enough that if you're just looking for a small ammo can or something, you may not be able to find it because of all the things that you did wrong. And that's what you got to do. And speaking of which, you know, on Monday, I'm going to show you how to walk in a straight line. Five, six different ways of how to walk in a straight line. I guess depending on how you look at it, it's either four or six. Uh, but <laughs> it should be a good one. So make sure you check that out. So something that I take pride in, um, as I mentioned earlier, I got a soldier uh, who's competing, and, and maybe next week I'll show uh, what I'm about to show you for the soldier for my non-commissioned officer. This dude is awesome, uh, Specialist Tomas. Uh, he hails down from uh, California, and he's just been, he has such a great attitude and, and is so motivated uh, to do the best job he can and to be a part of the team. And so it was really awesome to see uh, about three, four months ago, I guess, when he competed uh, in the first round, he absolutely crushed him, man. He killed it. And he comes across maybe sometimes a little, a, a little shy, uh, maybe he's a, a little introverted, but, man, when, when you cut him loose, man, he is, he is just uh, he, he's a beast. So uh, one of the things that we had to do was... Uh, we had to create a video bio of our competitors for, so that when they win this next level, because it's required for the level after that, which is just a couple short uh, before the Army board. So we're super stoked. So let's, uh, let's watch this real quick, and then uh, I'll see you right on the other side. Specialist Tomash, pointed to the president and the board. My name is Zachary Tomash. I was born and raised in Mexico, California. And for as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an American soldier. In 2017, after graduating high school, I enlisted and earned the MOS 25 Sierra, Satellite Communications Systems Operator Maintainer. I'm proud to be a warrior and a member of the finest team in the Army, the United States Signal Corps. My first assignment to serve the people of the United States was in Camp Everjohn, where I always placed the mission first, ensuring that thousands of warfighters throughout the CENTCOM AOR maintained networking activity and hundreds of combatant commanders were enabled with Mission Command to take the fight to the enemy. I'm currently a member of the oldest and finest Signal Battalion in the United States Army, the 51st Expeditionary Signal Battalion in the Great Pacific Northwest State of Washington, where I serve as a Phoenix Operator. We recently engineered and validated a heat close backbone to support the i core Warfighter, a feat that required us to think outside of the box and never accept defeat. 
I work every day to master my craft of being a signaler and a soldier, but always maintaining my arms, my equipment, and myself. I know that the time may come where America needs me to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States, so my short-term goal includes attaining the rank of sergeant, so I can instill the same warrior ethos and drive to others, so my squad knows that we are gardens of freedom and American way of life. My long-term goals include obtaining a degree in engineering from the University of California, retiring as a command sergeant major, and purchasing a home in California where I can continue to embody the Army values and be a positive role model to my fellow citizens on the American way of life. I'm special to Zachary Tamash, an American soldier. This is Sparta, always constant, utmost of our abilities, Sky Dragons. Man, isn't that cool? It just pumps me the hell up, man. I tell you, I tell you what, he, he pumps me up. And as cool as, as this one was, it was awesome to make. Uh, I felt like I, I had something to do. <laughs> oh, man, that was awesome. Uh, everybody up, uh, up higher keeps asking who made this. I'm like, yeah, you know, just some guy made it. <laughs> None of your business, that's who made it. <laughs> Besides, folks should be on, uh, on him. So, look, man, I appreciate you all's time. Uh, next week, actually, you know what? Uh, maybe sooner than next week, I'm going to have another video posted on the fifth principle of patrolling. The principles of patrolling is something I've been talking about for a minute. And then Patrick, uh, down in the comments, uh, uh, last week had made mention of, uh, you know, talking, uh, spending a little bit more time on the principles of patrolling. And this is something that's certainly been a lot on my mind and the fifth I'm a fifth principle kind of guy so uh, look forward to that and we'll keep this conversation rolling you leave some comments down below I'm a uh, shout out back to you down in the comments and if you know there could be uh, a comment if, if there is I'm like hey you know this is gonna be a great discussion point and we're gonna address it further in detail uh, here in video format next week. Man, I appreciate you all. Have a freaking stoked week. And until then, we'll see you.